Welcome back everyone to the mod showcase. Hope you all are having a wonderful day so far. This is currently our second episode of season six. As you guys can probably guess, I do mod showcases for every single update, switching the seasons around. You guys know how it is. Of course, before we get started, modding is not officially endorsed by Frontier. When you do mod, you do mod at the risk of breaking your own game. But if you follow all the instructions laid out by my handy dandy tutorials and follow the instructions of the modders, you guys will be playing with these guys in a snatch now of course before we get started i have a little bit of a funny mod over here not really funny but pretty useful now you guys may see down here uh we have our simulation speed now if i just hit my i guess close parentheses button just a couple times no it's a plus button you can see that our monkeys are going very fast and this is now Kai's speed mod. So this essentially allows you to change the speed of the game without actually affecting the simulation speed. So you can change that and go up to, I guess, five times 16, which is gonna be around like, you know, probably, oh gosh, it's been such a long time. I wanna say 80 times the speed, probably not. Probably only 16 times speed, but still regardless, you can click close parentheses to reset that, then go back to your normal speed. Really handy dandy mod, especially if you're trying to get like babies made in Planet Zoo, if you're trying to get animals to breed and whatnot, that's a really easy thing to do right there. But anyways, moving on through here, we have a lot of different mods to check out. I believe we actually have 40 mods total. That was one of them. So we're going to get started over here with a remaster to one of the older mods. This one is the Barberry Macaque. This one is made by Giorno Pizza, and she did such a wonderful job with this one check this out so of course as you guys can probably guess the barbary macaque is one of the only primates left living in europe yes i was about to say england well technically it kind of is england it's gibraltar but that's a whole can of worms that we could get into over there of course the barbary macaque is a beautiful little primate these guys live all around gibraltar i know they're very famously from there but they live in some other parts of europe as far as i remember and yeah they're just really funky monkeys so yeah giorno did such a beautiful job with these guys they turned out great i love the new colors on them uh, she released this way back in the day, I want to say during 1.5, but yeah, these guys are so gorgeous now. So of course, as you guys can tell, they're only found in Gibraltar as well as some parts of Northern Africa. Very interesting over there. But yeah, of course, full Zoopedia and whatnot, really amazing job, Jorno. Really cool mod. Now moving on through here, we have the Lace Monitor. This one is gorgeous. Now, of course, this one is made by my good friend Vince Abel. He does such an incredible job with reptiles. One of the things I always applaud reptile modders for is just the keen detail that they're able to accomplish. You can see that Vince was able to do these small little splotches, which goes extremely well in terms of mods like this. It really takes a dedicated person to really make a convincing and beautiful reptile mod. So that is incredible right there, Vince. You did a really wonderful job. I love every single little detail that you were able to sneak in here from everything from the little claws and stuff like that. But still, besides that point, this is, of course, the lace monitor. These guys are found in Australia. Australia, I believe he took some really beautiful pictures over here really incredible shots uh, they're only found in Australia in those small parts but it really is super awesome just to have more reptiles in the game especially a lot more Australian reptiles it really is incredible just to see how well they came out this is a little funky thing over here I'm not sure what's happening over here with these guys I think they kind of got a little glitched out when they were drinking their water so we could of course move these guys around and they should be get, getting back to normal but yeah you could check these guys out eating to look at them it really is incredible even the detail on the head is really gorgeous so amazing job Vince now moving on through here we're gonna take a little trip back in time this is the Longhorn Bison. I don't even know how they even slept back then. This one is, of course, made by Narwhaler, the king of Paleo mods, or at least Cenozoic mods. Check these guys out. Oh my gosh, that is wicked awesome. So, of course, these guys are related to modern-day bison, except for the fact that these guys had monstrous horns. 
check these guys out. They look like a big ol' C right there. It's wicked awesome. Of course, these guys do have sexual dimorphism, which is awesome to see as well. So the females have slightly smaller horns. Meanwhile, the males have these giant ones that they would use to like establish dominance, as well as fight off any predators, which is really awesome to see. If you guys are interested in paleo mods, I really do suggest you guys try them out. Even if you guys want to make a little bit of a paleo zoo, these guys are perfect for that. Now moving on through here, Narwhaler not only does paleo mods, but he also does some pretty good extant ones. You guys may remember my Persian Onager, well he did the specific species, not the subspecies of this time. This one is beautiful, it's a different kind of horse, utilizing sorry, the Shavalsky's Wild Horse from the Conservation Pack. These guys are incredibly beautiful, they're only found in these small parts of the world. I believe they are related to the ass. Uh, so it's very much related to the Somali wild ass and stuff like that. Really beautiful animal. Except these guys have a little bit more of an orange kind of texture, which is really awesome to see. I really do love like all the small details in the texture over here. I'm not sure how much of that is the mod and how much of that is the base texture that Narwhaler used. But it really is super awesome just to have a lot more equine representation in Planet Zoo itself. Really awesome work over there. Now, of course, this one may be one of the more controversial mods today. Uh, this one is, of course, the Amor Leopard Remaster. This one takes the stock Amor Leopard from the Conservation DLC and really helps to fix up the face a little bit. I know a lot of the times people had some issue with the way that the eyes were oriented, which this mod sets out to fix. I personally do like it because it kind of slims down the face a little bit and takes a stylized approach from Planet Zoo's original art style and kind of makes it into a lot more realistic and a lot more structured towards the actual skull shape that Armor Leopards do have. Of course, if you guys don't want to use this set, it's totally fine, but I really do like this and just the insane amount of work that Havoc and Gavoy were able to achieve. And this is part of that standalone remastered thing, so these guys won't break, knock on wood as far as we know, during updates from 1.10 to 1.11, so that is wicked awesome. And they don't overwrite files anymore, which is a really other awesome great thing to have. But yeah, these guys are looking incredible. So a really, really big old job to both Havoc and Gaboy for their incredible work at remastering this such gorgeous animal. Now making our way through here, we're going to take a little dip in the fresh water. We have a lot of fish mods to check out today, both by Buffzu and I, so we're just going to get started with them, starting with the Red-Nosed Labio. This one is a beautiful little species found all over Africa, not really all over Africa, but more so your tropical regions. The Labio is, of course, a kind of carp kind of species. Uh, I believe it's the... what is their family? We need to check this out. It's a Cyprin... Cyprinidae. So these guys are related to like carps, kois, goldfish, and whatnot, but the Congo ones and the ones from like, you know, the Rift Lakes and the Rift Valley and stuff, these guys are incredibly odd. Uh, I won't say beautiful because beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but they really do have such beautiful things such as big fins, like big sail fins and stuff like that, and they look just incredible. Oh my gosh. I believe these guys are from Fishing Planet. And we also do have another uh, Labio as well. We just gotta find him. And here it is. It's the purple Labio. This guy is a little bit creepy to me. I don't know what it is about these guys, but they kind of do feel a little creepy to me. But still really awesome regardless. These guys have a beautiful purple hue with a little bit of red undertones on them too. Let me turn on my little light in here. You can see just how beautiful this species is. So in case if you guys are trying to have like a nice hippo tank, uh, with like places for your pygmy hippos or your giant hippos to go in. These guys are perfect for that. I just said giant hippos and said Nile hippos. That's kind of weird. But yeah, these guys are perfect for that as well. Moving on from there, we have the grass carp, another carp species. Buffzu and I are going hand with the carps. Another fishing planet, one over here. These guys are really cool. These guys are from the Amur region, so a lot of Mongolia, China, Russia, and Korea. These guys are native to those areas. These guys are often used as uh, food as well. And these guys have a really beautiful texture on them too. They have these really gorgeous scales on them. And they have a lot of different colored variations going on too. So these guys would pair nicely 
nicely with your Amor Leopards over there in case if you guys do want to have like an Amor section, kind of like in the City Conservation Center that I'm setting up. Even though I don't use mods in there, it really is super awesome just to have this kind of species diversity. Moving on from there, we have the Tiger Muscalunge. This guy is actually a hybrid species. Unfortunately, we don't have any hybrids uh, technology in Planet Zoo right now, so they are kind of bred from both Muscalunge as well as the Northern Pike, which gives them this really beautiful kind of texture on them. Uh, they are, of course, named the Tiger Muscalunge because of their kind of stripe pattern, which is wicked awesome to see. And of course, they are a very prized sporting fish, so they're often let into waterways and stuff like that for fishermen to catch and maybe even eat. I'm not sure if they're really commonly eaten, but they're still a really cool creature nonetheless. And what about the one that it comes from? This is, of course, a clear Muscalunge, otherwise just known as the Muscalunge, otherwise just known as a musky. These guys are incredibly beautiful. I really do love these species in particular just because of how beautiful their shading is as well as the red kind of fins that they have. It really is such a beautiful representation of how gorgeous uh, North American wildlife and fish can be. Oftentimes the fish in the world are often supplanted by Asian and South American species but North American wildlife specifically their water life is incredibly beautiful and the t um, regular muscalunge sorry really goes a long way to show off just how gorgeous these species can be check these guys out but of course we have a lot of other animals to check out in here as well what about this little catfish this one is of course the channel catfish these guys are very much found all across the globe they're found all over not the globe but all over north america specifically that guy stopped swimming so we gotta find one that is swimming uh, these guys are very commonly fished in, you know, commercial sports and stuff like that. I don't know why everyone stopped fishing. We should probably box everyone up, then make them go back in. Of course, if you guys are having issues with fish mods, I always like to say make sure that you guys have enough accessible water. So you can check out that they do have the access to the water right over here. And make sure it's deep enough. Always making sure that it's deep enough allows the fish to actually get in the water and make sure it seeks it out right away. And you can kind of see the little parade of the fishies right there. Always love to see that kind of stuff come into play right there. But you can see they're kind of marching their way right into the water. They hit a certain point, then they start to deep dive. It really is awesome just to see like the inner mechanisms of the mod. But still the channel catfish is a beautiful little animal. I've already seen a few people building for this already in ZSU and stuff. They're a fairly common ZSU species. But check these guys out. They have these little splotches on their back over there. And they look wicked adorable too. I always love catfish. I know they're kind of ugly, but still there's a cute little quality that these guys have to them. Moving on from there, though, let's see what else we haven't covered just yet. I believe we have the Anjumara. These guys are a South American species, relatively not well known about. Really beautiful creature nonetheless, though. Very badass looking fish. These guys kind of remind me of like a freshwater coelacanth. I don't know why, I think it's just like the way their scales are made and their fin back there, but they really are such beautiful creatures. They're kind of related to tetras and stuff like that, so in case if you guys do have like a tetra tank at home, these guys are kind of like its next door neighbor. Really cool species in case if you guys do want to have freshwater aquariums, specifically Amazon aquariums in your zoo, these guys are fairly common in the aquarium trade not really too common but they are in it which is really good for realism so in case if you guys do want some of those go check that out but moving on from there we have one big guy in here that i just need to find the chance to you know seek out actually we should probably check out some of the smaller guys first we have the ryukin yeah, the Ryokin goldfish. These guys are found from China, originally domesticated in there. And it really is super awesome just to have all these fancy goldfish breeds in Planet Zoo, especially if you guys are having a lot more garden-based builds. These guys can go right into your beautiful little ponds, and they make a beautiful little centerpiece to them. Really gorgeous creatures, and it's super awesome just to have these guys in there. I believe we do have another species of goldfish in here. Uh, but before we get to there, the dwarf gourami, relatively common aquarium trade fish. These guys are beautiful, really tiny. They're from Southeast Asia. So they're found from like Indonesia and stuff like that. Really beautiful fish. They pair somewhat well with some other like common freshwater fish, 
but they can stand out really well on their own. Incredibly beautiful fish. I really suggest you guys check these guys out in case if you guys are trying to bring a little bit more color to your tanks. And what else do we have in here? Another African fish. This one is the banded tilapia. These guys are often used as food in Africa. They're often farmed. Very often farmed fish over here, tilapia. It's very much used within the culinary uh, world as a way to substitute a lot more endangered fish out there. Uh, it's a relatively nice tasting fish, very much white fish if you've ever had that before. But look at that, we should probably stop talking about eating these guys and talk about how beautiful they are. I believe they can pair fairly well with hippos. I'm not sure about uh, Nile crocodiles and stuff like that. You guys might be able to get away with that. You, they might not bother them. But still a really beautiful animal nonetheless. You can see that they have these nice beautiful stripes over there, giving them that distinct banded look. Really awesome creature. Definitely check it out. But moving on from there, this one I've been dying to check out. This is the Taiman. Specifically, the Hucho Taiman. These guys are found from Russia to Mongolia, all amongst the Amur River. Really awesome to start getting all these beautiful Amur species, just because it goes hand in hand with the conservation pack. Really, really um, underrated area in terms of ecology. Really awesome fish in there, though, too. These guys are related to the salmon, which give them kind of like their elongated appearance, as well as the red tail. That's often a very popular trait that you'll see in salmonid species as well. Really awesome creature nonetheless. And we also have the Blackmore goldfish, otherwise known as a telescope eye goldfish. These guys are wicked awesome. Again, another fancy breed of goldfish. If you guys, it's kind of like the pug of goldfish, if that makes sense. Really awesome creature nonetheless. They kind of have like a double tail, which is super cool. But yeah, check these guys out if you haven't yet. Now, if you guys don't mind me, I'm just going to quickly check out what animals we have not checked out in here just yet. We checked out the Anjumara. We checked out the Grass Carp, Channel Catfish, Dwarf, uh, Labio, Muscalunge. Uh, both the goldfish and the thyme and tilapia and that's about it for freshwater fish so i hope you guys enjoyed that but moving on through here we also have a lot of cranes and birds and herons of course we're going to start off nice with the great blue heron this one is very emblematic of north america waterways and wetlands of course this one is made by ginger toast a lot of these are made by ginger toast with the help of monsoon help get this beautiful distinct kind of uh I don't know how you would call that. Feathers? Yeah, feathers. I don't know what feathers are, apparently. But he did such a beautiful job with this heron. It looks incredible, and we have a lot of other ones to check out. But I really do love both the work that both of these guys put in here. Both Monsoon for the wonderful work on the feathers, getting them to look really good, as well as uh, Ginger for getting these faces to look incredible as well. Super awesome species. Hope you guys are able to check this guy out. Ginger, my only, my only, my only little qualm is how this doesn't really blend well over here. If you could just take like the clone tool, go like really light with that, it'll look really, really good. I also, yeah, it kind of repeats just a little bit. Ginger, I believe in you though. I believe in you. Fix that up and this guy will be perfect. I'm so proud of you though, buddy. Amazing work. But moving on through here, you did not just bless us with that one. You blessed us with a whole bunch of other great ones. This one is a great egret. I believe these guys are found in... Don't, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. Europe? Oh my gosh, they're found all over the world. All right, never mind. These guys are a beautiful bird. You may have seen them in the wild before, depending on where you live. Really beautiful creature. They have these beautiful white feathers, as well as these nice green faces, as well as a beautiful yellow beak. Really incredible creature. In case if you guys do have a zoo and you want some native wildlife out there, or if you guys even want to have these in your zoo, that's perfect right there. You guys can do that definitely. Really gorgeous creature nonetheless, and we have a lot of other gorgeous fish, not fish, birds to check out from Ginger as well. I believe this is a snowy egret, named definitely so because of its snow white texture. Believe it or not, these guys are not found in snowy regions. They're only found relatively uh, in warmer climates, which is kind of funny given their name. But yeah, these guys look very much like the white egret, except for the fact, or the great egret, I forget the name, oh my god, I'm losing it, but named definitely so, because of their white texture. But they look somewhat different, they have these beautiful white feet, as well as a beautiful black beak, 
Really awesome creature nonetheless. Amazing job, Ginger. You're doing such wonders over here with all the birds. Super awesome just to get more bird modders out there. Uh, super awesome just to see all that come into play. And speaking of that, I completely forgot one of the uh, birds that we needed to check out. So don't mind me. I'm just going to pop a couple of them right in here. Because guess what? I kind of forget about it, guys. But while those guys kind of make their way over there, I'm going to use a speed mod to actually get them to come over quicker. But yeah, we do have the Grey Heron, which is a beautiful, beautiful little creature. Very much like the Great Blue Heron, except for the fact that these guys have a little bit more of a grayer texture. And some of the markings on the face don't really match up the same way. But still, these guys are a beautiful, beautiful little creature. I believe these guys are only found in Europe, Eurasia. Yep, look at that. I was right for once. That's pretty good over there. Really amazing job, Ginger. Always love to see that. Great work on that. Just great. And then we have one from my good friend, Annika. This one was kind of helped out with me. I did a little bit of model, tech, model work, but uh, my good friend, Annika, did all the texture work on here. Beautiful animal. This is, of course, the blue-winged goose. This guy is only found in Ethiopia, but they're a beautiful, adorable, mind you, little goose species. Really, really adorable creatures. So I do have these guys in ZSU, and my friend Annika wanted to learn how to texture, so this was a little bit of my trial course for her, and she did such an incredible job for her. These guys kind of have, like, a little bit more of a fatter head. I do need to thank Bongo Hardwood for the base over here for, like, pretty much all the goose species, but yeah, these guys are a little bit more chunky than your regular goose, which is really, really adorable. But you can see just how adorable these guys are. I really do love it. And the texture came out so good as well. So much detail in here. So in case if you guys do want um, goose species, these guys are perfect for you, especially if you're making like an African section. Really good species to have over there. Now, of course, we are going to end it with another fish showcase. You guys thought we were done? No. We are just getting started. We're gonna start off with, and forgive me over here, the Veticola Conicta. And yeah, I give up. This is a Cambrian animal, as you can probably guess. This guy actually existed. I don't know how, but he definitely did. This one is made by Ginger Toast, Rick Modding, and Joseba. Really interesting little creature over here. I really do love the texture on it, specifically. But Rick was able to model it and bring it into Planet Zoo, and Ginger was able to code it, which is really great to have. I believe this is our second Cambrian animal. The Animalicaris is the first one. So it really is super awesome just to have this little goofball in here. I think it actually comes with another texture as well. If we could find that in this mess over here of a whole bunch of fish. I could probably do that and bring these guys all the way up here. That's pretty much how you get the fish mods to work. We unbox all of them and they should be able to come out here. I don't see them in here. Oh yeah, it's a purple one. So yeah, it does have a purple variant. Very cool over there. Uh, moving our way throughout here, we have the white spotted puffer. This is a really beautiful creature ported by me and Buffsu. Really, really awesome just to have all these saltwater fish in here. Really adorable one too. I think it's actually the first puffer fish to be brought into Planet Zoo, which is really cute. Check these guys out. Look at them go. We also have the Atlantic Wolffish, a really badass looking fish over here. It looks like he's always frowning. But yeah, these guys are found relatively in pelagic and kind of deeper ocean areas. Really super awesome creature, by the way. Really, really beautiful. Moving on from there, though, we're going speed running through here. We have the Yellow Tang, of course, a very iconic reef species. These guys are found in the Indo-Pacific and are very emblematic of reef fish all over the world. Check these guys out. They're beautiful yellow appearance really makes them stick out and make them a really, really favorable fish among the hobbyist aquarium trade. And while that shadow is going over us over here, we got to check out the Pacific Sleeper Shark. These guys are related to the Greenland Shark, which can live up to, I want to say, 200 to 500 years, somewhere in that ballpark range. These guys are really freaking awesome, by the way. I really do love the shape on these guys. This guy was ported from Beyond Blue. Really awesome game, by the way. You guys should definitely check it out. But it's super awesome just to get all these animals in the game, regardless. Moving our way throughout here, though. We also have the... I forgot which one this is. The Shovel Nose Guitar Fish. 
really awesome creature, especially from the bottom. I always love seeing rays from the bottom because they look so cursed. But check this guy out. These guys are related to sharks and rays, of course. These guys are really freaking awesome. I don't know. I just... What else is there to say? It looks like a cross between a shark and a ray and a guitar. Three of my favorite things in the whole world. Check these guys out. Check these guys. Swimming. They move really well. Check these guys out. Oh my gosh. I don't know what else there is to say. Really beautiful creature. Moorish Idol. You guys may know this guy is Gil from Finding Nemo. But these guys are very emblematic, again, of Indo-Pacific uh, reef life. Really, really popular fish in Hawaii. And they're made their way onto the pet trade as well. Uh, very much popularized, popularized because of Finding Nemo, and yeah, you can probably guess why. Their beautiful coloration really speaks to how gorgeous this animal is. Uh, what else do we have in here? We're getting through these all. We have the Swell Shark. These guys are awesome, alright? Hear me out. This guy can actually inhale water and become twice the size that he is right now. It really is super awesome just to see that kind of morphology in the wild. Really awesome creature regardless. These guys are super freaking cool. And they have a beautiful texture as well. These guys are ported from Beyond Blue. A lot of these are. We're kind of making our way through the Beyond Blue games and the Fishing Planet games. But yeah, these guys are super awesome. Look at those teeth. You don't want to mess with those. But yeah, amazing job Buff Zoo for bringing that. We also have the Sea Crate. Really awesome just to get a lot more snakes in here. Especially the Sea Crate is an aquatic snake species. Really awesome to really find out that like snakes can live in the open ocean. And these guys, I believe, do have a neurotoxin. Let me actually double check this. Uh, Yep, they are venomous, which is really, really scary to think of. Because you could be swimming in the ocean and this guy would come up and bite you. But yeah, really awesome creature regardless. Super awesome just to get like all those animals in here. Lump Sucker. Hell of a name over there, am I right? These guys are super awesome. Oh my gosh. Lump Suckers are probably some of my favorite fish out there. Just because they look so goofy. You guys may know like frogfish and stuff. These guys are somewhat related to them. They're also related to lionfish. You could probably guess that. From like their little disposure over here, they kind of have like that same body shape, body morphology and stuff like that. Super awesome just to get these guys in the game, especially this bright green variant. They can come in all different sorts of colors. I think Buffsu and I will probably work on getting different colors for these guys later down the line, but so far we just have green, which is super awesome to have regardless. We also have the Powder Blue Tang, really beautiful creature. Again, another beautiful Beyond Blue port over here. These guys are incredibly beautiful. Check these guys out, they look incredible. Of course, a very, very emblematic reef fish as well. We're getting all those reef fish in here, guys. We're getting as many in here as possible. Really good stuff in here. And I believe we also have the long tooth grouper. Relatively not too reef fish. I believe they're only found like northern Pacific. So they're a lot more pelagic fish, a lot more colder water, but still bring a nice touch of color to your aquariums as well. Really gorgeous fish nonetheless. I really do like the spikes that they have on there. Buff Zoo and I are gonna figure out how to remove like those alpha planes and stuff like that from these models soon, so we can get to work on that and have these guys look even better, but really beautiful fish regardless. And I think that might be it. I think I haven't touched on the white marlin yet. Really beautiful creature. The white marlin is, of course, found in the Atlantic Ocean. These guys are some of the fastest swimmers out there. You can tell just, just how fast they can get because of their kind of like aerodynamic body structure. And it's kind of funny that they can actually leap out of water. But this guy is kind of taking a little trip above the water. Not really sure why he's doing that, but he's being a little goofball. He's being a little silly guy right there. Uh, possibly even goofy ah. But what else do we have in here? Let's see what else we haven't covered yet, because this mod showcase is probably one of the longest ones in the wild. And I know that you guys are probably dying to get back to all your Sunday festivities. But yeah, we got through the wolfish, puffer, marlin, and we got through the Cambrian animal that I'm not going to pronounce again. And yeah, I believe that's actually it for our entire showcase today. Really awesome showcase. Uh, really awesome mods. Let me know which one yours is your favorite. Yeah, you can tell just when I hit like the 30 minute mark about, uh, I start to lose all sense of any dictionary that I kept in my head. 
but still, let me know what your favorite was in the comments down below. I gotta say, my favorite is the Amor Leopard remaster. Really small changes, but still beautiful regardless. But I think we're gonna end it with a beautiful scape at our beautiful little ocean tank in here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to give me a like if you want to, of course. There is no pressure to do so. I still appreciate you guys stopping by nonetheless. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you all in the next episode. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye.